This will start the Battle of Armageddon. During the War of the Great Day of God Almighty, Jehovah will use his heavenly forces. Included among these will be all of the 144,000 who by that time will have received their heavenly reward. Then, in a spectacular way, Jehovah will no doubt unleash both natural and supernatural forces to protect his loyal servants and eliminate his enemies. I have long said, the better the university, the greater the danger. Has the governing body changed its position regarding the pursuit of higher secular education? No. Are the heretics? The smartest Jehovah Witness in Norway is called Hans Christian Kotlar, and he's a friend of mine, and he's been in the Jehovah Witness literature explaining his faith. And the funny thing is with Jehovah Witnesses, they're not supposed to have any education. They say it's important to have a minimum of an education, but having a relationship with Jehovah is importanter than an education. <laughs> but Hans Christian Kotler had an education. And as growing up as a Jehovah Witness kid, I was always told that you shouldn't think your own thoughts. If you think your own thoughts, you will start a chain reaction where you turn out like Gollum with a ring. It's dangerous. And critical thinking is not allowed. And there are some disciplinary punishment for a father that will allow his children to go to school uh, if he's a, one of Jehovah's Witness elder. So when I moved to Trondheim, I noticed that it, uh, people that worked with science, when we knocked at their doors, they would often say that Hans Christian Kotler is one of Jehovah's Witnesses, isn't he? And the Jehovah's Witness would be very proud to say, yes, there's a smart Jehovah's Witness. And I thought that was confusing. On one hand, I was glad he was a Jehovah's Witness. He's an actually nice guy. If you're watching this, Hans Christian Kotler, hello. He's not allowed to talk to me anymore since I left the cult. But he's a nice guy, <laughs> and I would like to talk to him if he ever comes to visit this part of Norway. But people in field service would say, Hans Christian Kotler is one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And my friend, the other Jehovah Witnesses would say, yes, there's a smart Jehovah Witness. So they would use it as a selling point for the religion. There, there's a smart guy called Hans Christian Kotler that is a Jehovah Witness. And you can still find it in the Jehovah Witness literature that he explains his faith. And even as a believing Jehovah Witness, I, I realized this is so wrong because there's 10,000 Jehovah Witnesses in Norway and one of them have an education. And that's extraordinary. <laughs> it's still a very bad statistic. Even if we do have one, let's just prove that we have less than other religions. But people, with an academic background in Trondheim that we met when we went from our door-to-door -door ministry, it was obvious that they had respect for him. And I was curious about this. He was, go he was going around among the Jehovah Witnesses and giving uh, speeches about how we know from a scientific point of view that God exists. And he would ha he's a great, he's a good guy at having speeches. And he was talking about the laws of thermodynamics, how the law of second, the second law of thermodynamics proved that there is a God. And when you're religious, you believe in what you want to believe. So the audience were eating up everything he said, and the law of thermodynamics proves that there is a God. Well, even as a believing Jehovah Witness, I had problems with this because the law of thermodynamics are really good if you want to build some kind of steam engine in a four-dimensional universe. Then the law of thermodynamics is really good, but to prove that there's a spirit being outside our four-dimensional universe isn't really what the law of thermodynamics were created for. So even if with, as a Jehovah Witness believing that really wanted to believe that everything he said was true, 
I had problems doing that. And most of all, even if the second law of thermodynamics proved that there is a God, then he was just jumped to the conclusion that that guy is called Jehovah. Because if Hans Christian Kotler is correct that the second law of thermodynamics proved that there is a God, how did he jump to the conclusion that this God is called Jehovah? There's a big gap there. It could be Odin, it could be Allah, it could be Almighty Bob. So, I was curious about this, but Hans Christian Kotler is a nice guy, and I remember I was at a party with him, and Jehovah Witnesses believe that the whole world is a conspiracy against Jehovah Witnesses. The government is controlled by Satan, His Majesty the King, Kong Harald of Norway, is worship the, is a devil worshiper everything is against us and in 1914 jesus threw down the demons to earth so they could mess with jehovah witnesses yes jehovah witnesses believe demons are real and they're there to attack jehovah witnesses and jehovah witnesses believe that demons are angels created by god but then they went bad so those angels are very big powerful and they took part in creating the universe so a demon is basically an angel with the intelligence and the powers to create a galaxy and now they're here on earth they're invisible and out together so in the jehovah witness folklore they are very afraid of smurfs and trolls and stuff like that is this toy magical mm -hmm. caleb who likes magic, Jehovah or Satan? Satan. Right. Magic is bad. That's why Jehovah hates it. Do you really want to play with something that Jehovah hates? So what if you disobey Jehovah and play with toys he doesn't like? Do you think Jehovah will be happy or sad? Sad. Yeah. Do you want Jehovah to be sad? No! I don't want Jehovah to be sad with me. And now the funny part. Hans Christian Kotler is one of those people that are afraid of trolls, smurfs, and all of that. So I found this, even as a Jehovah Witness, I found this amusing because the people you would meet in the territory, they would have all this respect for this guy. And we will use it as a selling argument that an intelligent person was a Jehovah Witness. And he's a biotechnician, something like that. And still he's giving speeches about thermodynamics. I have, don't have a background in academics, but I'm pretty sure that biotechnology and thermodynamics are two different fields. <laughs> anyway, so I was at this party with Hans Christian Kotler and his lovely wife. And they had bought a bottle of wine and they realized Castillero del Diablo means castle the, the devil, the devil's castle. It's, it's a brand of wine that's common in Norway, Castillero del Diablo. So they realized there might be demons in this bottle. So the whole evening I was listening to Hans Christian Kotler talking about how to get rid of red wine demons that he had been bought buying on the Norwegian alcohol store. We have a special store in Norway for alcohol. It's government owned. It's called the Wine Monopoly. And Hans Christian Cutler and his lovely wife had bought a bottle of wine. They came home. They looked. It's called Castle del Devil. And they realized that when Jesus Christ threw down the demons in 1914, one of them ended up in this bottle. So the wife thought they should put it down the drain. And Hans Christian Kotler, if memory serves me right, it was his idea that they couldn't do it. They had to walk out of the, his, the house because otherwise, according to Kotler, they would have demons in the actual pipes. So they had to went, go out on the street up on Heimdall where they live and open the wine and pour it down the drain, the storm drain on the street. So, from an academic point of view, 
this would be a good idea if the demons don't know how to swim upstreams. And I remember, as a believing Jehovah Witness, listening to this story, I found it so amusing that the people in Trondheim that had all this respect for him, and we were using it as a selling point, look, we have a smart guy. The same guy was standing on a storm drain in Heimdall, <laughs> puring out, perfectly fine, red wine, because the, it might be a demon in the bottle, lodged in the bottle since 1914 when Jesus threw them down on earth. And he has been waiting in this wine bottle to attack the Cobbler family. So they pure it down the drain. But then they had a problem what to do with the cork. Because the Cobbler family logic and typical Jehovah Witness logic was that there might be a demon in the cork. So they were talking back and forth about this and if memory serves me right it ended up with them having a little burial ceremony for the cork in the garden so they buried so when you believe that demons are powerful angels powerful enough to create galaxies and they're sent down to earth to mess with jehovah witnesses why would a ceremonial burial in the Cutler Garden stop the demons? Anyway, and then I remember the Cutler family were talking about what about the empty bottle? There might be demon residue in this. And Sister Cutler, she said we have to burn it or something, but Daddy Cutler the alpha male who said, well, Jehovah will protect us, we'll put it in the garage and we will take it away and throw it away. And Sister Cutler said, but yes, but we, maybe the demons will destroy the brakes on our car. But Cutler said, no, Jehovah will protect us because this is the car we use in field service. Field service is when we go from door to door. And I remember listening to this story as a Jehovah Witness. And I was just thinking about all these people that we meet in the territory that say, Cutler, isn't he one of your... You could see that they had all this respect for him. And I was just wondering, what if they would have been in this room listening to half an hour of anti-demon strategy, how Castillero del Diablo had to be dismantled to remove the demons, all based on the thesis, first you have the religious thesis that the demons were thrown down to earth in 1914 as a part of the conspiracy to attack Jehovah Witnesses, because it's a doomsday cult, and doomsday cults always believe that they are persecuted and the world is going to end soon. And if you don't eat, join the religion, you die. So that's the religious thesis, that Castillero del Diablo might be possessed by demons. But then you have the scientific part of it. How do you dismantle this nuclear bottle of wine? Well, you go out and pour it down the storm drain. So you have this very intelligent man standing in plain sight in the middle of the day, I suppose middle of the day, on Heimdall in Norway, puring down perfectly with fine wine, based on not a religious thesis that we are a persecuted doomsday religion. No, based on the thesis that demons cannot swim through the drains back into the house. <laughs> and I remember, wonder what all the academic people in Trondheim would say if they saw us here. And I couldn't understand how does this make sense? How can an intelligent man turn off the intelligence sometimes and turn it back sometimes and I realized there's something about this that we believe in what we want to believe and one day he he told me the story about how he became a Jehovah Witness and he said so this is how I want to retell the story if he probably he will tell it in a different way himself and now when I left the cult I have a different outlook on life so the story will he if you want the story from him you have to ask him so this is how i would tell it and this is how i remember it he said that he was he painted a picture of himself being 
lonely and what I today would call emotional vulnerable. And there was a knock on the door and there was this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Jehovah Witness woman that offered him a Bible study. And later he became a Jehovah Witness and married this lady. So I would say that he wasn't using the big brain when he became a Jehovah Witness and he's not really using the big brain when he's pouring out red wine in the storm drain in Heimdall in Norway. <laughs> Based on the notion that demons don't know how to swim upstream back into his building to possess the sink of the kitchen. <laughs> so, but he's a nice guy and if you want to learn more about thermodynamics you should talk to him. So that's my story and if Hans Christian Kotler is watching this you're not allowed to talk to me but I'm allowed to talk to you and about you and if you ever leave the cult and want to pick up on our friendship I'm here and if you want to stay in the cult and you want to walk around in Trondheim being afraid of smurfs and trolls and red wine do that that's the wonderful 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 thing with democracy we can choose what we want to believe even if it's absolutely ridiculously wrong I have long said the better the university, the greater the danger. As we mentioned earlier, ultimately the parents must decide how much education a child needs to succeed in life. One mom, I recall, asked me to try and help her son who was attending a prestigious name university in Rhode Island. After visiting him, I later had to inform her that her son now believed in evolution. Here Jehovah guarantees that one day every person on earth will be a true worshiper of him. Will you be there? Will your son or daughter be among those alive? Will your son or daughter be among those alive at that time? Do your personal decisions matter? Yes. Look at verse 12. So then, each of us will render an account for himself to God. Yes, we all will have to answer to Jehovah for the decisions we make today. May we all decide to play it safe before our God. So what do you think you should do with this toy? Caleb, I am so proud of you. You made mommy very happy. And you know who else is happy? Jehovah. Yes. Jehovah loves you very much for obeying him, Caleb. <gasps> hey, you know what I want to do? What? I want to go ride bikes. Yay! Let's go! So, see you in paradise. <laughs>